calling you up at two in the morning. But you don't wanna talk, you don't wanna bother. Yeah, so I took another shot, let my brain do the walking. I don't wanna be a friend, I want something real. Maybe if I stay the night, you could feel the same. And maybe if you treat me right, we could rearrange. But I'm not even gonna try if you don't wanna stay. So how's it gonna be? You got me on my knees. I don't need no roses on my bed. If I could pull you closer to me, babe, ain't nobody touch me like you can. Oh. I'm closer, a little closer. G'day guys, I'm Brad. I'm Hayley. And welcome back to another episode of Our Australia Trip. So in this episode, we are going to continue exploring the Fleurio Peninsula, but the northern end, and then we're gonna head up into the Barossa Valley. Yeah, so at the moment, we've just moved from Rapid Bay, which was actually a little bit heartbreaking because <laughs> I really loved Rapid Bay. And we moved up to the McLaren Vale Winery region. And we just spent the afternoon, it's Monday afternoon. We just, <laughs> if you can't tell from the slurring of the words, we just spent the afternoon in the gin distillery here. So we'll cut to some clips of that and then get on with the episode. <laughs> Tear me apart when I know you don't want me. Cause I've been going fast and you wanna go slowly. Maybe I'm just wasting time Tell me how you feel I don't wanna be a friend I want something real Maybe if I say the night You could feel the same And maybe if you treat me right We can rearrange But I'm not even gonna try If you don't wanna stay So how's it gonna be? You look at me on my knees I don't need no roses on my bed If I could pull you closer to me, babe Uh-oh. What's happened? What's better than three gins? Four, Four gins. <laughs> the hey. lovely lady came over to us and she said, because you've bought um, the tasting flight, if you want another one, all you have to do is sign up for the, like, subscribe to their newsletter email list. And we're like, sure. <laughs> three gins. So I've got four, and this one's really nice as well. It's mm. a, um, like, sweet, extra sweet one. So we've been hanging out at the caravan all day today because the weather's been pretty gloomy and my good old Apple weather app told me that it was going to become partly sunny from like lunchtime onwards. It's now I think 3.30 and there's no sun. It's still just gloomy and cloudy but we're not going to waste any more of the day. We're going to uh, jump in the car and have a look around because I still think that there's a lot of this Flurio coast to see so we'll go check out some of it now. Well, behind me here is the first sign of the history of Port Wollonga. Now, if that structure wasn't there, it probably would have just been known as Wollonga, but it's Port Wollonga because that jetty, they used to export all sorts of goods and um, crops. That was a jetty? That was a jetty back in the day, and it was wrecked in a big storm in the 1900s, but mm. um, used to be popular for fishing and all sorts of stuff. And this is home to a pretty special place in Australia, one that's not really common anywhere else. They've actually hewn into the sandstone or the limestone here and created a little cave to store their fishing boats. So we're gonna go over there and check them out now. That's a ladder. It's actually quite deep. Yeah, pretty big fishing boat or multiple fishing boats, I guess. This is not like anything I've ever seen before. You know, I thought I'd be a little bit underwhelmed by this, but this is actually kind of cool. It feels a bit eerie. A little bit eerie, a bit like a mine shaft. I'm gonna go and guess that this isn't sandstone because I think sandstone's a lot harder wearing, so 
I suppose it's limestone. I should probably read up on that, but it's a bit damp in here, but if you can actually see where they've chipped away at it, you can actually see the strokes of the pickaxe or whatever tools they were using. Very cool. And there's a jetty right there. Well, the uh, remains of the jetty. Look at that. That looks like, I reckon, an old, part of an old winch with that rotating collar on there. That would have been braced up there and they probably would have had a bit of rope on there. Send it out down the beach. And then old, um, then old Barry, Barry Bog Trotter would be on the handle, cranking and winding, bringing the boat in. And they'd say, bring the boat in, Barry. <laughs> oh, there's a um, block and tackle. What's that? Oh, they just would have used it to pull things up. Maybe like, I don't know, crates of fish or, I don't know if these boats had engines or if they were row boats, but. Yeah, an old block and tackle. Just for lifting things, Patsy. I reckon they had up. Um, what do you reckon? I reckon they had paddles, and that's what the shelves are for. <laughs> we reckon the shelves are for the paddles. Seeing a sedan on the beach is just so strange, but here at Aldinga Beach, I think it's Aldinga. Selix Beach. Selix Beach. You can drive on the beach. Um, just, it's just like that, the sand is that hard. It's like a concrete slab. So we pre-packed our, what was supposed to be lunch, but it's dinner now. And I uh, thought we'd come down and spend an afternoon here. Pretty cold outside, so it's <laughs> we're just rugged up so in I here. Just showed Anissa to get its weather sorted out. I actually was not expecting it to be this cold. Neither, but I just like naively thought as soon as we got to South Australia, we'd be in beaches, hot weather. Yeah, I actually thought it'd probably be too hot, but we've run the diesel yeah. heater more times than I can count. <laughs> Thank God for the diesel heater. <laughs> in South Australia is how the towns all look so unique like nothing that we've ever seen before and they're really pretty they have like beautifully manicured gardens and they look like something like they're from a different time and place the buildings are made out of stone and they look like something from another country like something that you'd see in a fairy tale <laughs> And the town that we're in now is another example of that. We're in Handorf, which is a really cute, quaint German town. Uh, it literally looks like we're in Germany. There's so many different food places and cafes and like pubs and that sort of thing. So we're really keen to go and check it out. And we're gonna treat ourselves to a German lunch today. Patsy? I've been learning lots. So because it was a German town in the um, World War when all the bad stuff was happening in Germany, a lot of them had to change their names. Like Schmidt turned to Smith and Nietzsche turned to Nichols and Schneider to Taylor. So they like changed their names and then they also closed down the Lutheran schools 
and then anyone who they thought was kind of might have been suspicious in like the, this German town, they sent them to this Torrance Island as like a precaution. They sent 300 men there. Yeah, they changed the name of the town from Handorf to Ambleside, but then they changed it back um, once the war was all done. When the war was happening, anyone of German descent, which was like everyone around here, they had to go to the police station and declare themselves as German aliens. We are about to leave Harndorf when we realised it was the home of Beerenberg Strawberries and Strawberry Jam. We're going to stop in and just our luck, it's strawberry picking season so we might even be able to pick some strawberries here. It was literally made like three days ago. By Chad. <laughs> Good on you Chad. Chad. <laughs> Hello. Love a bit of spontaneity. How do you say? <laughs> Spon spontaneous? Spontaneity. Spontaneity? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> anyway, didn't even know this place was here. Next minute, we're out picking strawberries in a strawberry field. So <laughs> we went in to look at the jams. I just want to take a photo for mum because she always buys that jam. And then we saw that it's strawberry picking season, it's only just started and we can pick strawberries from the farm. It's only like a $5 entry fee per person and then you get to pick your strawberries and then they weigh it and you just pay for what you pick. So we're going to go pick some strawberries now. Beautiful. You can literally smell the strawberries in the air. So yummy. <laughs> oh, look at that. Do you want that one? Chuck it in your gob. Yeah. They did say that you you should sample them. I thought like, you'd pick the biggest one to sample. Like when you're in Woolies, you gotta try the fruit before you. Oh, that is juicy. Mmm. I didn't think we we're gonna get a kilo of these, but I actually think that we are gonna get a kilo. <laughs> You know how sometimes you buy them from the shop and they're really big and you bite into them and they're like tough mm. and not very flavoursome? This one's so yummy. It's the opposite. Oh. Look at that monster. Have a go at this. We've honestly only walked probably 20 meters and we've already got a kilo worth of strawberries and it's not like we're picking every one that we walk past we're like looking for the best ones and the <laughs> reddest ones so like there are a lot of strawberries here there's just red everywhere you look um, they're so big and delicious but yeah it's pretty good for a half an hour's little fun little outing in Handel yeah, what a, a pleasant day. surprise well I've had some strawberries I've collected some strawberries I've spilt some strawberries <laughs> You can't take me anywhere. <laughs> in and out in half an hour. What a good day or a good afternoon. I love South Australia. When the sun is out. Yeah. <laughs> in Asterix. Yeah. <laughs> What's happened, Brad? This bloody cow cut me off. This campsite, eh? 15 bucks a night. What's it called? Hillview, Hillview Farm. Farm stay. Hillview Farm Stay. Out just out from Harndorf, about half an hour north of Harndorf, which is pretty nice. Hello.
standing there, you brave in Today is the last day that we can have a fire in is it South Australia or Yeah, this South Australia, yeah. There's like they have fire danger season and fire bans and for good reason. Everywhere else wouldn't even let us have a fire, but this like privately owned campsite said today was the last day you're allowed a fire before the fire bans start. So we got in just in the nick of time. Can't We're absolutely in. making the most of it. Yeah. Mind you, I'm starving, so I haven't even let it rest, but this is just how we're doing it tonight, darling. Finger mm -hmm. food. A couple That's of skewers. Right. It's getting better up this end. Not a bad view to have dinner to. No, this is a good campsite, eh? Mm. Just keep eating more. <laughs> there you go, these bits are good. Yeah, that's that's actually that's medium or yeah, medium or rare. Oh, so good. All right, just gonna enjoy this, darling. Mm -hmm. So we left our little hilltop camp and we moved to a campsite in the Adelaide Hills. We had a break from the camera while checking out the city and sites, but here are some shots to enjoy of Brighton Pier, Glenelg and the CBD where we checked out a V8 supercar event. We made the most of being in the big city, it would likely be the last one we'd see for quite a while. Our weekend here was a mix of fun, maintenance and stocking up for our journey up to the Barossa and then over to the York Peninsula. We can tick the first winery off our list at the Barossa. We've just come to Sepplesfield Winery and I have had the best cellar door experience I've had to date. It may be my first in the Barossa, but I've been to the Hunter Valley before and um, this just kicked its butt. We had a, a six tastings yeah, and we eight. had a, an awesome history by the people that work here, Harry, Maddie and Jess. They just went through everything in um, complete detail, taught us a bit about the history. They were so friendly, like they made the experience even better. Yeah, and um, also learned something new. Like I've, all this time I've been drinking wine and I didn't know that wine was named after the grape itself. So a Shiraz is a Shiraz grape or a, you know, a... Uh, like a Moscato is a musket grape. Yeah, a musket grape. So that, that was um, something that I never really knew before, but have picked up. And we've also picked up a couple of bottles to take home as well. So we're gonna move on now and we're gonna head up to the mausoleum. So the Sepultsfield founders um, have their own mausoleum. So we're gonna go check that out and I'll tell you about, I'll tell you a bit, bit about the history when we get up there. Mm, feeling a bit rosy cheeked already. <laughs> Ok, 
Okay, so we are in Sepultfield, and Sepultfield was named by the original uh, owners and founders of the land and the winery, the Sepult family. They come out here in the 1850s, just, you know, not even decades after the, t the state of South Australia was formed. And they originally intended to farm these plains and these hills um, for tobacco, but that didn't really work out, and they started producing wine instead. And come the turn of the 19th century, the 1890s, um, they were the biggest wine manufacturer in Australia. And it's easy to see why tasting their wine today um, it was just, you know, it was exceptional. The old man passed away um, and he wished to be buried somewhere where he could look over his farm. So they had this mausoleum built on this hill and he can look over the farm and the valleys. Um, you know, it's got 360 degree views here. And hard times fell on them in the 1920s um, with the Great Depression. And I think it's very interesting that they decided to keep their workers busy. They were really involved in the community and to keep the workers busy and the people in the community, to give them an income, they got them to plant all these palm trees. There's about 5,000 palm trees. There's five kilometers worth of palm trees actually. They're absolutely everywhere and it gives this place such a unique um, vibe and such a unique uh, style and look. So a very cool place, Sepples Field. So I love chocolate and I convinced Brad to come along to the Barossa Valley Chocolate Company and they actually do wine and chocolate tastings here. So we've finished our afternoon off with that. I'm having so much fun. I'm absolutely in my element. Wine and chocolate, like what more could you want? <laughs> she had to do a lot of convincing by the way. It yeah, really had to twist the arm. <laughs> Actually staying at the Greenock Recreation Oval Camp here. It's only five dollars a night donation, and it's a really good base to be um, to explore the Barossa. We had a few people tell us about this one too, and I'd already saved it on Wiki Camp. So, so yeah, really good to hear about. And Brad's actually told me that tomorrow night, Friday night, apparently there's going to be some sort of Christmas parade on the Oval, like right there. Like, like show them how close there. the Oval is. There's the oval right so there. So right there, tomorrow night, apparently there's going to be a Christmas parade and I am a Christmas fanatic. I'm actually, I've actually been a bit sad lately because I'm not home for Christmas and not like experiencing all the Christmas spirit. So to find out that there's apparently going to be a Christmas festival thing there, I don't want to like believe it yet until I see it, but I'm pretty excited. <laughs> All right, well, it's day two of our little Barossa adventure. Another day, another one. <laughs> um, today, we're going to be starting off in New York Bar, which is a little town in the Barossa. It's a bit of a mouthful, but <laughs> we've been recommended to come to the tap house here, a little brewery. But next door, there's also the Penfolds um, cellar door and an authentic pizza restaurant which I don't know about you guys but when I'm drinking wine I feel like some good you know like fermented dough wood fired pizza, wood -fired pizza. Yeah. so we're and gonna apparently Penfolds is well Brad was telling me it's like a really Australia's biggest like wine or something and I'd never even heard of it it's one of the biggest and best in my opinion um, and they've got like vineyards everywhere but they are based in South Australia so I'm keen to check out the cellar door and um, yeah hit all three all three businesses here in this little uh this little arcade we'll see we'll see how we're feeling after like <laughs> the second one it is possible to get two wine down
Here's the original bath and the original windmill from the show. Patsy, are you going to hop in? Yeah. They literally used this bathtub. And I was just saying, I remember the rain dancing episode where they hadn't had rain in ages and then they finally got rain and they did it because they did the rain dance and they all danced around the windmill and they hopped in the bath. <laughs> Look now that. look at me! You're in the bath. You're at the wrong I'm end a, though. I'm a McLeod's daughter. Are you McLeod's daughter? Yeah. Really? <laughs> Another one. Funny McLeod has daughters coming out the wazoo. <laughs> what do you mean I'm at the wrong end? This is the end that you're supposed to lay in because that's like all hard oh. up against your back. Oh my, oh my god. Do I have to teach you how to use a bath? There you go. Oh that's, yeah, better. that's, that's more, more Oh my god. <laughs> Lord help me. Oh, I'm gonna hop in too. There we go. We're in the bath. We're in the McLeod's daughter's bath. I got my boots on. <laughs> sort of be un Australian if you didn't come to Freeling or Gungellen and not visit the Gungellen Hotel. And... Well, we actually both watched McLeod's daughters with our mums when we were growing up, so it was really special to come here and have a look at it. Yeah. It was definitely on our list when we realised it was so close. <laughs> it's just a shame that you can't go to the actual Drover's Run property. If well, you, you can if you can afford $5,000 a night. <laughs> five grand a night to stay at the, the old homestead, which is just mind-blowing. But anyway, we're going to keep on moving and head up to the York Peninsula.